Zero Accounting Software 2023 Purchase of Inventory Using Bank Feeds Periodic Method Versus a Perpetual Method of Tracking the Inventory Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023 Here we are in First, a word from our sponsor Well, actually these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program But that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface. And the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well. It's easy to use. It seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Our custom zero home page going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Going up top, right clicking on the tab and duplicating it. And then we'll right click on the tab again and duplicate the tab again. Let's go back to the middle tab, accounting drop down. We want to open up the balance sheet report and then we'll tab to the right accounting drop down open up the profit and loss report and then on the p and the l i'm going to do the date range change bringing it back to 2022 which is the same date range as our data input from the bank feed so i'm going to go to january 2022 it should be and then december of 2022 and the end of it and we will then update the january didn't take it didn't take just impact it on the surface so there we go we're going to update it all right and so then we're going to go back to the first tab here and now we're going to go into our accounting drop down let's go to our bank accounts this is what happened when we uploaded the bank feed information we've got our bank account drop down i'm going to go into the account transactions and then we're going to go into the reconcile tab so last time we talked about the different methods that we could use when we have the inventory noting that inventory kind of throws a wrench into the system we talked about last time the idea that if we have a little bit of inventory we can try to stay in a cash based system which will allow us to continue with our strategy of attempting to create our financial statements directly from the bank account data but now let's think about a perpetual inventory system and a periodic inventory system so first we'll do a periodic inventory system so I'm gonna go down imagine that we are paying for inventory again so I'm gonna pick pick one of these items down here all right so we'll pick this one here now note last time we simply recorded it to cost of goods sold so now what the system is doing, what Zero is doing, is memorized uh, this transaction. It pulled it up uh, from the memorized transaction. We didn't make a rule for this one, but we have clicked down here that we want to suggest the previous entries. If I uncheck that, then uh, we don't see that blue box there anymore. Now note, you might actually want to turn that blue box off because that will make it easier for you to, to make sure that you are actually setting up the rules to be exactly what you want, right? Because that's gonna make it less likely that you make a, a problem. So I've unchecked that box and now we don't see anything here. All right, and so then 
Uh, I'm gonna hit the details drop down and let's imagine we have a periodic inventory system and we're purchasing the inventory. So I'm not gonna track the item again. Uh, the item represents us tracking inventory within the system, which would track not only the dollar amount going to the inventory, but also the units creating another sub ledger. That creates more complication to track within the system. So this time we're gonna say, I'm just gonna record it as an account here, but instead of recording it to cost of goods sold and expensing it, I'm gonna put it on the books as an asset and then I will track the inventory in a physical unit method, but not use the items within zero to do that, instead doing it in Excel, which gives me more flexibility to track it in Excel, for example, and then just simply do periodic adjustments into the system. So I'm gonna put it into an inventory account. We don't have an inventory account. So I'm gonna make an account like 1300, let's do, so I'll add an account. I'm trying to think of the account number 1300. Let's say it's going to be a type of account, which is going to be a current asset. So we'll pick that up. Uh, current asset type of account name. I'm going to call it inventory. I'm going to call it inventory like one this time because we might want to, when we do the perpetual inventory method, uh, track it in another account so we can see how the sub ledger works possibly. So we'll say inventory one description. That looks good. All right. So if I record this, what's it, what's it gonna do? It's gonna increase the asset account of inventory instead of cost of goods sold and of course decrease the checking account, but we won't have a sub ledger tracking the units of inventory, imagining the units of inventory being tracked outside of the system. All right, we'll save the transaction and then let's go ahead and match the transaction. So we are imagining the purchase of inventory, balance sheet account, updating it. We've got the inventory is now on the books as an asset here. Now remember, this is, it seems obvious, but it, it sometimes it's easy to kind of forget that clearly the balance sheet is being reported in dollars. Obviously the inventory itself is in units. So if we have five units, five widgets of inventory, they have like a $10 cost, right? So we have, so we, so we have to have that conversion thing of converting the units to dollars. Now that becomes kind of an issue, especially when we're buying the same units of inventory over time as we have inflation typically and the unit cost goes up, right? Because then when we sell the inventory, we're faced with the problem of which inventory unit did I sell? Which is the proper cost to apply to it? That's when we have to deal with that flow assumptions like a first in first out or weighted average which again, you might do externally in like an Excel worksheet or something like that. Now, the other side, of course, decrease the checking account. There's no impact this time on the profit and loss or income statement. We didn't record the expense of cost of goods sold. When would we, re we record the expense of cost of goods sold? When we sell the inventory. Now note, if you're using this method, then the next things that will happen with regards to that inventory is you're gonna sell it at some time in the future, right? When you sell the inventory, you could do it uh, using an invoice form or a spend money form. If you're using the actual bank feeds uh, to record the sales side of the transaction, you will receive the money in the bank feeds over here, right? And then when we get the money in the bank feeds, we could record simply that as revenue. We could just record it as revenue when we get the money. So if you do that then, when you get the money and record the revenue, you're gonna record just revenue and not cost of goods sold. We're just gonna see an increase in revenue on the income statement. When are we gonna record the cost of goods sold? We will do it on a periodic inventory method, meaning if I go back to the balance sheet over here, what I would do under this method is continue to record every time I purchase inventory to an increase to this inventory account in dollars I'm not tracking it, those units within zero, but I am tracking the units outside of zero in Excel. So for example, whenever I purchase something in Excel, I'm tracking the unit increase and I can do my cost of goods sold calculation in Excel. I can take a physical count of the inventory and then take my beginning inventory plus my purchases, physical units, minus the ending inventory that I get from a physical count and that will tell me how many units of inventory I sold. And then based on that, and based on a flow assumption, first in, first out, LIFO for, or, or uh, weighted average, I can determine 
the decrease in the inventory over that time period. And then I'll just do a journal entry in zero decreasing inventory and recording the related cost to get sold, possibly on a nightly basis, possibly on a weekly basis, possibly on a monthly or even yearly basis, depending on the method I'm using to track inventory outside uh, of the system. So that's a perpetual inventory uh, method that you could use. I'm sorry, that's a periodic inventory method because we're adjusting it periodically at the end of night, night, week, month, or year. And so then your next method is the perpetual method, the full service method. All right, so if we're doing a perpetual inventory system, now we wanna have our inventory account go up, but also have a sub-ledger tracking the inventory account uh, when it goes up. Now, normally if I go to my flow chart in a perpetual inventory system, this is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but I'm just using it to show the accounting flow, which is the same for most accounting cycles. On a perpetual inventory system, when we buy the inventory, we might buy it with just like a check form or a decrease of money out type of form, but we would be tracking items. We have to set up items in order to track it. Or we might do more of a full service system or a process of requesting the inventory with a purchase order and then receiving it with a bill, recording it. And then uh, once we have received it, uh, uh, then we pay the bill, right? So we could have, it depends on what kind of process we have to request our inventory. So if you're using basically the bank feeds to try to fit the bank feeds in uh, most clearly here or most directly, then we might just say it's a money out form. We purchase the inventory with an electronic transfer and try to enter it in that way, but also see if we can add the items so that we can track the inventory in the system. Or if you were having a method where you request the inventory, you would have a purchase order. That would be a deviation from a cash based kind of system. It, it would make more work than trying to create your books from just the bank feeds because the purchase order is a request of inventory. There's no cash actually happening. There's actually no impact on the financial statements and you would only use a purchase order if you have sufficient amount of leverage uh, in your business dealings with your, per with your supplier to request the inventory to be shipped to you before you pay for it. And then when you get the inventory, it would then have a bill in it and you can enter the bill or pay the bill uh, at that point in time. And then of course, once we record the inventory on the books, we're gonna sell the inventory. Normally that would happen with an invoice or sales receipt form. But if you're trying to make it all automated in the bank feeds, you could imagine a system where you wait till it clears the bank and try and try to record revenue with a, with a deposit form, right? But the problem is when you record the sales side of the transaction, you also want to be tracking the uh, the units that are sold, right? Which means you have to track the items in the system if you're tracking that on a perpetual system within zero. All right, so if I go to the first tab, just note that if I hit the drop down when we purchase inventory, uh, you might first use a purchase order and then uh, enter a bill from the purchase order, or you might just pay for the inventory, you know, at the point in time that you're that you're purchasing the inventory, like you kind of would if you're an individual buying something from like Amazon or something, in which case you might use the bank feeds uh, for something to clear. So we're gonna say, all right, let's pretend that is the case, but we're gonna need an item. So we wanna put our inventory items in place to track. So the items you can find by going to uh, the business dropdown and going to the products and services. So I'm gonna go into the products and services and I'm gonna set up a service item, the things that are usually populated when I make an invoice or something like that, the things I'm selling, the things I wanna be tracking on a unit basis as well as a cash basis. Let's add a new item. And I'm just gonna say this is gonna be uh, it or inventory, let's say inventory item one, just generic name in it. That's gonna be the name of it. And the purchase, uh, when I purchase them, I'm gonna say that, uh, let's keep, let's keep, see if I can keep it blank so I can purchase it, enter the item when it comes through on the bank feed, see if it allows me to do that. I'm gonna say the purchase account is going to be going to, 
I'm gonna see I'm gonna keep the same inventory account. I was gonna create two, but let's just put it to that same inventory one account. And then the sales price, let's say we sell them for like five hundred dollars. Let's just make up a number here. Sales account. So the sales account, notice I have two sales accounts. This one uh, is usually sales often refers to selling of inventory items versus service items which have no inventory and then if there's taxes involved in with the sale like a sales tax or a usage tax then you can set up your taxes as well and that also uh, the taxes also muddy up the ability to be able to make sales by waiting till something kind of clears the bank because uh, because the taxes themselves is going to be an accrual type of thing. You're going to have to put something on the books as a liability. We might talk about that a little bit more later, but let's go ahead and save that. So now we have our item. So now let's go into our banking again, account or accounting drop down bank accounts. And let's go into the drop down here and go into account transactions. And I'm gonna go into the reconcile item. I'm gonna look for a transaction on 1017. Next, 1017, I had a transaction I wanted to look for. So here's the one. So I'm gonna say that this, this was for the purchase of inventory. So let's go ahead and add the details on this one. And I'm gonna say this is Primerica 01 again, so it's going to go to Primerica, uh, let's just say to Primerica. All right, I already have this one in there. Let's keep that. And then the reference is good. Now it gives me the ability to add an item here. So I'm going to say, okay, let's see if I can add an item. There's item one. And notice it's removing the dollar amount. I tried to not put a dollar amount in the item so that it would keep the dollar amount here that we're that we have uh, on this side but it's not doing that because it's going to use zero as the item so i could still say okay let's just say the unit the unit price was 30 and that's going to bring it back up to the 30 amount here so that looks good before i do this let me just change that item back so i'm going to i'm going to go back to the item again business drop down uh hold on a second business drop down. I'm going to go back to products and services. I'm not going to record this one and I'm going to put that $30 as the cost. So I'm going to go into this item and let's say that we want to edit the item and let's put that cost of $30. So it makes sure that it tracks the $30 cost. So there it is. Okay. So I'm just adding the $30 cost. Now let's go back into the accounting let's go back into the bank accounts let's go into the manage account account transactions and uh reconcile and then back to that transaction all right let's do this again so we're in here i'm going to say that i'm going to add the details for this 30 dollar transaction and okay da, 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 and then i'm going to add the item and so now when i select the item there it is it's pulling in that thirty dollars now if you were to, to do it this way you'd have to make sure that whatever the item whatever you purchase down here you would have to actually fill in the items that match the total dollar amount of the thirty dollars so still this would be still kind of logistically difficult because most likely what what that what you would want to do is uh is go up top and enter you know the purchase order and then the spend money form and use the bank uh, reconciliations to reconcile the transaction. But it is, I just wanna show that it is possible uh, to do it, to, to run it this way. So, because you can, because it has the item field, which again, is a little bit different than some other softwares. I'm not sure if that capacity is in like, like the QuickBooks Online. So it's kind of interesting. And I kind of kind of like that they have at least the ability to do that in here. So what are we gonna do when this happens? It's going to record the inventory is going to go up by 30 just like before uh, and we're going to record a decrease to the checking account but also we have another account that will be created which will track the units of items that we're purchasing as well so let's go ahead and save it just to check that out 
and so save the transactions and but well, once a tax field I'm gonna say tax exempt again taxes would throw uh, kind of an issue into this as well I don't want to get into that right now but I'll say go ahead and save it all right so we're gonna go up and say now I'm gonna match it out so we'll say match it out and then so it's been reconciled if I go to the balance sheet and check it out we have our inventory account now has $80 in it that first transaction was not being tracked perpetually the second one was so now we have the $30 being tracked perpetually and nothing's happening to the income statement because uh, we haven't sold it yet this is a prior $30 from a prior transaction that's not the same thing right click on the tab up top let's duplicate it because now we should have another form that's actually tracking the inventory perpetually within the system so we'll go to the accounting drop down and reports and then let's type in up top i'm gonna say hide this this isn't the report i wanted this is not the reports you're looking for reports this is going to go to uh inventory item list inventory item list and this then is now tracking the inventory internally now we only have one item the cost of 300 of 30 dollars for it because uh and that normally would match what's on the balance sheet here but remember we posted something else that first transaction that wasn't tracked internally so this is the added report which is now tracking the units of inventory uh, and it'll apply a flow assumption for us and everything, but it takes a little bit more work for us to, uh, to, to populate. Now, the next thing that would happen in this process, if I go to the first tab, is that we would have revenue that would be generated. Again, normally, if you have revenue gener generated, you would have an invoice form or you would have a, a uh, receive money form. So for example, if I made an invoice form, and we had like customer customer one generic customer one uh then down here you would have your item that would be sold now the item is now matching the uh the, the the this is the item that is now pulling in from the amount that we populated into the system for for uh the items and it's now pulling in the unit price so if i recorded an invoice then what would it do it would increase accounts receivable which is a non-cruel account something that's going to be difficult to deal with with the bank fees but we'll talk more about that later the other side would go to sales of 500 and on a perpetual inventory system the uh cost of goods sold would be recorded as well as the the decrease in the inventory and if you had taxes involved it would also be applying the taxes over here as well so uh you you can also imagine being on a perpetual inventory system like i could imagine i mean sorry using the bank feeds i could imagine going into the bank accounts over here and saying that if i go into my bank account that that i'm going to see the deposits and i go into my reconcile I'm going to see the deposits that are going to clear the 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 bank so let's say this was a let's say this was a a deposit from an an invoice or a sale of inventory they do give you the ability to add the inventory item on the sale side here but again it would be difficult usually to do that if you get a deposit uh that's coming through then you're probably not going to track the inventory usually if you're selling inventory you're going to have to make an invoice or a spend or, or a or a receive money form and then match over here so let's just show that for now if i hit the drop down again let's just make that invoice again if i make the invoice again and say this is customer one customer one boom and this is going to happen in 2022 let's say so i'm somewhere in 2022 we'll say april or whatever of 2022 uh, actually it's got to be the end of 2022 doesn't it because we had it sometime in like december okay and then 
my item is going to be that inventory item. All right, so let's go ahead and record this. So I'd say approve uh, invoice field explain. I need a date here. Due date is going to be, uh, let's say, December 31st. All right, approve. So now we can have some revenue on our income statement. That'll be good. So if I go to my balance sheet and update that, now we're tracking accounts receivable, which is which is a non-cash kind of concept. So that, that pulls us away from just being able to construct our books on a cash basis. We'll talk about deposits more later. Uh, if I go to the income statement and update it, now we've got the... Uh, sales, which is recorded at that 500, and the cost of goods sold. Now, note cost of goods sold did not change because I didn't turn on the tracking of the inventory. So let me just show you what I mean. I kind of messed it up here. I'm going to go back to the first tab and let's go to our business drop down. And if you go into your products and services and then go into this item here, uh, I'm going to edit the item. So I turned everything on, but I didn't turn on the track inventory item, which is the perpetual tick mark you have to tick off so that it will track the inventory perpetually. So if you save that, it will not recreate everything retroactively. So if I wanted to do this again, I'd have to go back in here and say, okay, I'm gonna go in here and basically uh, delete the transaction of the purchase of the inventory. Uh, and then I'll record it again. So if I so if I go back in and say, all right, this transaction right here, I want to uh, remove it. So I'm going to edit, remove and redo. So I'm going to uh, remove it there. So there we have it. Then let's go back into my, let's see if that takes it out of the reconciled items, accounting drop down, bank reconciliation, and I'm going to go back into the manage transactions i'm going to look for that transaction in the reconcile item again and i believe we brought it back here on the 1017 so i'm going to record it again adding the details and so i'm going to say that this is going to be primary da, 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 item so now i'm going to add the item and it's now going to the inventory asset account that has been set up when I when I told it to set up on a perpetual inventory, so we have two inventory asset accounts. Let's record it again, saving the transaction and save the transaction and then see if we can match it. It wants something in the tax rate field. So I'm going to say, all right, zero, save it. And then we will match it. Okay, so that should record it again over here. So if I go back to my balance sheet uh, and my income balance sheet, I, I've messed up my balance sheet. I'm going to go drop down, go into my balance sheet, and we have updated it in here for 2022. Okay, and then so now we have this separate account for the inventory asset. So it's just tracking that $30. If I tab to the right on the income statement, we're updated here. If I tab to the right again, this is now my inventory tracking. And now I have now I have the one inventory account of the $30, which is tying out to the balance sheet account of $30 because this is the one we're tracking perpetually. Now I'm going to delete the accounts receivable and re-record that to show us the sale of that item. So I'm going to go into that one and go into customer one and i'm going to uh just see if i can delete this one we will uh, edit it let's see if i can just edit it maybe and see if i can change it to inventory one and see if that updates it so it is recommended to add the original content details Let's see if that will just simply update it so it'll track the sale of the inventory. And then I'm going to go back to the accounting dropdown and the income statement. And let's see if I can bring this back to 2022. 
and 2022 and update. So there's the 500, but no, it's not gonna update. It's not gonna update over here to here. So I'd have to delete or void it. Ah, all right, let's go into it again. Go into it here and say I'm gonna void it. Okay, make another one, invoice. And then this will be customer one customer one sometime in uh, 2022 the end of 2022 we sold this item which will bring the units of item back down to zero all right let's approve it again the due date field needs to be in play all right all right for crying out loud okay so then when we sell it, if I go back to the income statement, we now have the $500, but we have $60 in the cost of goods sold. That's what I was trying to get to because now it reduced with that sales item, the inventory account back down and recorded the other $30 here on the balance sheet. If I can open the balance sheet again, sorry about the mess of an issue I put together without checking that off, but we will get there. So we're going to say the balance sheet now has uh, the inventory account, you know, went back down to zero for that $30. And then if I look at my account over here, now the perpetual inventory account has gone back down to zero. Okay, let's take a quick look at the trial balance accounting drop down and reports opening up the trial balance type in in trial balance to do so and you, just, you could just see how the the balance sheet and the income statement are piled on top of each other uh in the trial balance <laughs> 